Every face tells a story. The twin who doesn't look like the other. And we can hear what people say, and we can see that they're looking and they're staring at Billy. The boy scarred from birth. When I walk into town, I get stared at a lot. My children, even adults. The girl who can't smile. One guy said that I'd be way hotter if I didn't have paper body and he would date me if I didn't. Different stories, but similar experiences. We're going to meet the children who are stared at, laughed at, bullied, for how they look. I just wish that I looked normal. It's okay. We want to know how they and their families cope. It's like a grieving process. You haven't had this child you were expecting to have. And we're testing whether groundbreaking face bullying lessons actually change the way children think. Absolutely incredible. I want to see the world through the eyes of children who have facial disfigurements. Billy's family has struggled to even take him out in public. At times it can be soul destroying, it really can, because as a parent, you just want to protect your child. How do you feel about that? Annoyed. He gets annoyed, yeah. You feel annoyed? Because they're staring at you, yeah. You don't like it, do you? No. So you can see that his head is quite, you know, that it's not a normal shape. Billy's nine. He's a twin. He was born with Apex syndrome. It's a, a cranial facial condition, all this part here and around his nose. It only grows at a third of the rate. The paediatric registrar didn't even refer to Billy as a baby. He just said, I have never seen anything like it before. It was just called it because he'd look so different. You've had kids who've seen Billy and started crying. Yeah, not just crying, hysterically crying because they're scared of him and they think he's horrific looking. Billy's still really young, he's nine years old. Yeah. Do you worry about this future? Massively. Because there's so much prejudice with people who look different. He would just say things to me, Mummy, why is that boy staring at me? Or why are those children pointing at me? You know, you don't want to keep saying to him, well, your face is different, and that's why they're looking at you all the time. Hello, Mark, this way. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Marcus's disfigurement is just skin deep. He's 12 and a talented trampolinist. But he was born with a cleft, a gap in his face. In reception, I was known with the boy with the face. People actually bullied you because of the way your face looked? Yeah. Some people have called me Scarface. And one time, I was like 10, and someone came up to me and said, if they look like me, they need to kill themselves. After when I came home, I just burst into tears and went on my bed. Did you tell your mum? Yeah, that really hurt. And I'm like, right, I think I need to go to school and sort this out. And she's just like, no, you don't, because you'll just make it worse. And they don't listen. That was his big thing. They don't listen. I, I tell the teacher nothing changes. I'm like, something had to be done. And I got in touch with Changing Faces then, and they came to school and spoke to school about about how they could help Marcus. <laughs> The charity Change in Faces deals with face discrimination, set up by someone who's seen a lot of it. Every single social interaction was problematic, and so is what was going on here, because my brain was saying, people like you, people like you, looking like that, don't succeed. This kind of preconception about disfigurement happens at a very young age. Impressionable minds will pick up these things very quickly. So, what do these children think? This short survey is about the general public's attitude to facial disfigurement. We've asked a research company to come and test year fives at Tetherdown School in London. 
Are you guys ready to go? The children are being Great. shown a series of faces and they have to match positive words like happy and successful or negative words like sad and unconfident with the photos. Because it's your brain reaction, you can't cheat it. This is kind of an experiment for us because this test has never been really used with children before. And we're looking at how quickly people can associate positive words with images with people with facial disfigurement. Tests like this are used across the world to find out what we really think on subjects like gender, sexuality and race. People with facial disfigurements, are they as likely to be discriminated against as, say, black people, women or gay people? Oh, definitely they are. I think it's as common. I think it's as painful. But I don't think it's recognised. Virtually everyone who takes this is slower to be positive towards disfigured faces. But the question is, by what percentage? You guys, you got a score of 11%. Which is amazing, actually. Although you're slower at uh, um, associating positive values with people with, a, with facial disfigurements, you're only 11% slower. Adults in the UK that we've tested before are at a score of 27%. Good. Good. You enjoyed it. The class is much more positive about facial disfigurements than the UK in general, but the children are about to get a special face equality lesson. We'll test them tomorrow to see if it makes a difference to their attitudes. Looking different is tough for any kid, but especially when you're a teenage girl and image is everything. I've come to Somerset to meet a young girl who has a facial condition that means she can't smile. When do people start to bully you? When I was seven, I think that's when. Things. What sort of things do people say? Um, mainly that I wasn't like pretty enough to be in their group, and they didn't want to be friends with me because I was weird or I looked different and didn't match them, and they just all kind of left me and isolated me because of my face. Before the surgery, with the smile, as you can see, happy little girl. <laughs> Caitlin was only a baby when she developed a large benign tumor on the side of her face. They took whole tumour out and while doing that they caught the smiling nerve and as a result of that she came around with um, facial palsy so the whole side of her face dropped. I took her to her preschool to have her photo taken with her brother and the photographer went oh mum what is she doing with her face and I was what do you mean and she went oh that silly face she's pulling and this is a photographer in a preschool and that was the first time I broke down, cried my eyes out, I had to leave the room, the preschool leader was trying to calm it all down, and that was the point when I realised that nothing was ever going to be the same again. As a 14 year old teenage girl, how important is image to you? I think it's very important, because like that's when everyone really starts to notice you. On my Instagram comments, sometimes I get like, oh you're ugly, or you shouldn't be taking pictures like that. So I started taking like pictures of like half of my face instead of my whole face. Do you ever wear makeup? A lot, yeah, all the time. I put like a lot of makeup on my eyes to distract people from my smile. We're seeing how the children have had to become resilient in the face of bullying. It still happens, but I have my friends to help me. Did you ever see people poke fun at Marcus at school? Yeah, they were like calling him Scarface and all that, but me and Connor um, would back him up and just tell him to go away. Did you see him as normal? Yeah, because like, he acted normal. He was normal to everyone else. As soon as JJ said, well, he's just the same as everybody else, I was really touched, really touched. It was really sweet to hear. Billy has his twin sister. When people point at Billy, what do you do? I put the review I do. You put the review? Yeah. He's quite good with Billy because he just, he defends him really well. But for Caitlin, primary school was hard. What did the school do to support you? Nothing. Literally nothing. Like, they didn't feel like it was a big enough issue to do something about it. If I found a magic lamp and I could have one wish, 
I would wish that I had a normal face and that no one ever noticed at all. I would wish that I could walk down the street without people seeing me and then doing the look away thing. So, can schools do more? Tether Down School is pretty rare. It's one of the few in the country teaching face equality. It started with the book Wonder about a boy with a facial disfigurement and compared with racism or homophobia or sexism, how important is it to tackle face bullying? Just the same, no different. The school uses lesson plans from changing faces. The charity wants to see it rolled out across the country. Why do you think so many schools are behind the trend when it comes to supporting kids with facial disfigurement? I think it's the pressures that they've got to get those academic results up. That is the biggest priority for most of these schools. The school children are also meeting Marcus and Caitlin. On the first day of school, how did you feel? Well, when I first went in, there was a lot of people staring, all that kind of stuff. But some of them didn't really care. Was it kind of a bit hard, more hard to make friends at school? It wasn't hard when I, when I first started school, but um, as I grew up and people grew up and we all started to realise I was a bit different, so I think, yeah. You shouldn't really care. Just, it's not you with the problem, it's the people that bully you. What is your favourite toy? Mm. I, I like my phone, I guess. Me too, mainly for Mongo. Do you play it every day? Basically. And once they started engaging with things that they had similarities with, such as Pokemon, those barriers just broke down straight away. But has their lesson changed the views of the pupils? They're taking the same test they did yesterday, when they were 11% slower to match positive words with disfigured faces. It's a brain reaction test, so your score won't improve with practice. This time, you got a score of 1.5%. Yeah. Basically, you don't really notice their facial disfigurement. That's really absolutely incredible. It would suggest that the education they had after yesterday's test had a very good impact on the, on the outcome today. That's very, a very plausible explanation, yes. Got smacked, to be honest. Really, really surprised. Meeting those children really made a difference and made them see that actually we're all the same. And it's just because of your face? I think it's vital, actually, that people are educated. These children, they're our future employers. You know, it's part of the Discrimination Act that you cannot discriminate against someone with a facial disfigurement. Yeah, you were so cute. Just, yeah, like, I definitely did gain a lot of confidence and realising that it's not my fault and if people have a problem with it, that's their problem, not mine, and I shouldn't feel bad for that. How would you like people to judge you? Um, by my personality and what I do. Not by my face. You can read much more about the story on the BBC News site. If you want to share the film, you can find it again on our programme page, bbc.co.uk forward slash Victoria. Thanks to you who got in touch, some of you with your own experiences, some of you simply with your opinions. Tony says bullying in any form is disgusting, but this seems particularly cruel and needs stamping out. Education is the only way. Jeanette on Facebook, I was encouraged to return to work as a teacher with severe facial palsy. Well, I not only received abuse from students, I became sick, severely depressed, and for many months suicidal, and I still have PTSD as a result. John says this, I had severe acne in my teens and twenties, which left me with obvious scars. Rarely do I escape verbal abuse on a daily basis, and this experience has turned me into a recluse. Heidi says, yep, schools should be making children aware of bullying facial disfigurement to children, as they clearly are not from their home life, and Carmel, as all children at school should be taught, everyone is different, uh, whatever their background. Thank you to those who keep them coming in. In the next.